Deconstruction of America begins with and depends on the deconstruction of American men. The left want to define traditional masculinity as toxic. They want to define the traditional masculine virtues, things like courage and independence and assertiveness as a danger to society. This is an effort that the left has been at for years now, and they have had alarming success. That's uh, uh, Republican Senator Josh Hawley discussing the left's so-called attacks on masculinity during a speech back in 2021. That fight over manhood has become a key focus for Hawley as he and other Republicans seem to be courting the support of disillusioned men. Joining us now, editor at the Washington Monthly, Will Norris. So, Will, uh, you take a look at uh, Senator Hawley's version of masculinity in a new piece entitled What Josh Hawley and the Right Get Wrong About Manhood. And let me read part of it. Uh, you say Republicans like Hawley are confronting a genuine social problem, but they're using it to promote their careers, to bring disillusioned young men into the party's fold in fundamentally harmful ways. They're misdiagnosing what is causing the ills of men and boys. Spoiler alert, it's not feminism. And they're wooing those hurting through a message of resentment. The reception on the left to Hawley's masculinity crusade has been predictable. Jeers, sneers, but little appreciation for a real social problem. Many young men are hurting. Women, too, often face misogyny, discrimination, and violence. Acknowledging the woes of one group doesn't diminish the suffering of another. By refusing to show how they're delivering for men the way they boast of delivering for women or minorities, Democrats are blowing it. They are failing to expose the fraudulence of the right and leaving votes on the table. Joe, this whole manhood thing has been an interesting um, tactic. Yeah, it, well, it has, and uh, there's a reason why politicians are talking about it, at least politicians on the right, because by uh, one measurement after another, young men actually are in a state of crisis. Mm -hmm. And as Will uh, points sure. out, uh, it's only the Republicans right now that seem to notice this. So, Will, let's talk about how Republicans, not just Republicans, but also what what I see uh, all the time when, when I go online, I've got three boys and um, uh, 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 varying ages. So I've kind of seen this moving. You know, the message from, from these people start out fairly positive, which is, you know, get out of your rooms, get off of your screens, get outside, exercise, make something of yourself. And that's the first part of the message. And anybody that's seen what's happened to boys, young men over the past 15 years would say, great message. But then it turns dark to misogyny and bigotry. <laughs> Talk about politically why people like Steve Bannon have identified this group and are trying to push them in a more radical direction. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me on today. And um, I think this tendency we're seeing among Holly and J.D. Vance and Marjorie Taylor Greene, some of the other figures on the right-wing fringe of the party um, to sort of mobilize misogyny this way, um, really did start in its sort of current permutation with the 2016 Trump campaign. Mm -hmm. Steve Bannon um, was, um, he really pioneered that strategy of sort of going after incels and um, using sort of the tools of Cambridge Analytica to sort of attract them to his cause and to the Trump cause. Other Republicans like Holly since that campaign have identified that as a winning strategy. Right. And so, uh, Reverend Al, I'm going to go to you. I know you have a question for, for Will, but this is something that Will points out. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Democrats shouldn't just leave the people like Josh Hawley uh, and Steve Bannon. The Democrats should see, you can see two crises at once, right? So if you talk about the crisis of manhood, if you talk about the crisis of young boys, the crisis of young men, as you have done for so many years, Rev, um, that doesn't 
mean women aren't facing misogyny. That doesn't mean women aren't facing their own challenges either. And there's been almost a zero-sum game. If you talk about men, then you're supporting uh, uh, toxic masculinity. And into this void have come people like Hawley and people like, um, and, and people like Bannon. There is a massive crisis among young men. You look at the numbers. Uh, and it seems to be growing by the year. What what are some effective ways for people other than uh, these far right political profiteers? What are some of the ways uh, to, to to help young men? I think the first thing you have to do is not ignore the issue and address young men and say we understand the issue. We understand what you're facing. We understand the crisis you're facing. And we have to deal with that as we fight for rights for women against uh, misogyny and uh, homophobia and the rest. I think that a lot of what uh, uh, they've been able to do, the Bannons of the world, Howley and others, is the fact that they even address them attracts them because they're feeling ignored. I'm talking about young men. And, and I think that any time you create a vacuum, whoever fills it, uh, benefits from it and and that that's what I wanted to ask you because from your piece I think that Howley and them whether or not the young men politically or ideologically agree with them at first they feel they're being embraced by them is right. that part of what you're saying and Democrats and and the left have not openly been able to say that as we are addressing and rightfully so the historic neglect of women and gays and 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 uh and others that we also are not forgetting that we have our own young men our sons our right. nephews in crisis the right has dominated this conversation um and i think that's a huge mistake on the part of the left um they have really struggled to put forward a positive message about masculinity in recent years and i actually think that democrats have a really compelling message if they choose to tell it, which is that they're the party that can actually deliver on some of the programs and changes in society that would help men who are struggling. Unlike Republicans, this is the party that's more likely to spend on legislation that will increase um, you know, job programs and improve education for men. Um, I think one really compelling example of that was the 2021 infrastructure bill, right. um, which the majority of jobs that bill created went to men. That's not something you ever heard Democrats talk about. And I think that's a real mistake. And it's, again, it's not a zero sum game. We can, as the left, can be supporting minorities, can be supporting women, and also giving a positive and inclusive message to young men. So, Will, sure. if you talk to, and you, you kind of get at this in the piece, but you talk to parents right now, and Democrats, progressives even, they may not say it out loud, but they'll say it in private, they're raising boys in a culture where the boys are hearing that by the very nature of their gender that they are toxic. Right, right. I'm, I am bad. I am toxic because I was born the way I am. And they'd like to see some change and move away from that. So what is, as you say, how do the Democrats handle this question better? Yeah, I think that cultural dimension is really the place to start. I think we need to do away with this idea, and I'm not the only one who thinks this, gender scholars like Richard Reeves at the Brookings Institute and others I've talked to really feel that the concept of toxic masculinity is a mistake. That's not something we should be saying. We shouldn't be treating young men as though their innate nature is a problem. I think that's really the place to start changing mm -hmm. the conversation about masculinity. Claire McCaskill, uh, your take on, on this and, and how Democrats could do better in responding. Well, first of all, do I have to? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's Holly, right? <laughs> and, and it's incredibly painful for me. Um, I, 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 Sorry, Claire. I, I, yeah, I just got to tell you that um, I think, I think it, it, the, the, first of all, this piece was very thoughtful and nuanced, and I recommend it to everyone. I read it yesterday, and I think you did a great job framing this issue. And I certainly agree that the Democrats 
need to quit doing to young men what we talk so much about doing to women. And that is somehow dismissing that who they are and how they are is somehow a problem. And it, this really is about walking the walk of inclusivity, but making sure that we are accounting for the Joe Rogans of the world. I mean, I've got a nephew who kind of lost his way um, because he got into the algorithms of Joe Rogan. And all of a sudden, he is defensive and, 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 and not as open to having a broad view of the world because he feels like nobody gets him except these guys who are railing against the Democrats because they don't get masculinity and they don't understand that it's okay. Manhood is okay. There's nothing wrong with being a masculine man. So I, I certainly agree with that. But Josh Holly is such a fraud and a foolish guy. It's hard for me to spend much time on him.